Picture an old man living in a hotel room in Manhattan. This is not just any old man, but Nikola Tesla, the brilliant inventor known for his pioneering work on the alternating current system. This man, in his twilight years, finds solace and companionship in an unlikely place, among flocks of pigeons on the busy city streets. One day, an unexpected visitor flies into his room, a homing pigeon with a band around its leg, adding yet another feathered friend to his unusual entourage. This deep affection for pigeons wasn't just a quirk, but a manifestation of Tesla's obsessive compulsive disorder, shaping his beliefs and his approach to his groundbreaking inventions. And there's more to this story, an even more intriguing part that, hmm, well, you'll have to stick around to find out. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? Ready to unravel mysteries together? I'm Caesar, your host for today's intriguing discussion here on Curiosity Wonderland. With me is the insightful and vibrant Sonia, here to shed some light on the fascinating corners of history. Hey there, beautiful people. I'm pumped to dive into today's topic with all of you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to keep those curiosities flowing. Let's get started. As we continue to unravel the connection between Nikola Tesla and his unusual bird companions, it's fascinating to reflect on how this world-renowned inventor found solace among the pigeons of Manhattan. This particular morning, in February of 1935, marks an intriguing moment in Tesla's life. An unexpected visitor, a disoriented homing pigeon, found its way into the Hotel New Yorker where Tesla was residing. And without hesitation, Tesla, in the midst of working on a new electrical project, paused his work to care for the bird. This just goes to show the depth of his dedication and affection towards these feathered creatures. Tesla, who was known for his groundbreaking designs of the alternating current motor and the Tesla coil, was often seen feeding the birds during the late hours of the night. Imagine this, amidst the bustling city life of midtown Manhattan, Tesla would sound a low whistle and be instantly surrounded by a flock of pigeons perching on his outstretched arms. It's a sight that seems almost surreal, don't you think? Despite his groundbreaking contributions to the field of electrical engineering, Tesla lived a rather isolated life during his later years. With no family or close friends, he found companionship in his pigeons. One pigeon in particular, a beautiful bird with a pure white coat and light gray tips on its wings, seemed to have a special connection with Tesla. But that's a story for another time. Isn't it incredible how life often brings us the companionship we need in the most unexpected ways? Have you ever found a friend in an unexpected place or in an unexpected creature? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button if you're enjoying this journey into the curious life of Nikola Tesla. As we delve further into the bond between Tesla and his favorite pigeon, it's revealed that Tesla believed that he could communicate with this pigeon on a deeper, almost telepathic level. It's fascinating, really, how this brilliant inventor loved this bird, describing how beams of light would shoot from her eyes when they were in silent conversation. Now, it would be easy to dismiss this chapter of Tesla's life as a sign of a man descending into loneliness or madness, believing he was in a romantic relationship with a bird but doing so would prevent us from understanding the full picture. This was a time when the universe was being redefined with the discovery of invisible waves from the electromagnetic spectrum. The lines between the possible and impossible were blurred. Tesla's obsession with pigeons seems to have been triggered by an obsessive compulsive disorder. He had developed many strange likes, dislikes, and habits since his childhood. And here's where it gets interesting. It's really fascinating how these details give us an insight into the complexity of Tesla's mind. The same mind that invented the alternating current motor had this unusual, if not eccentric, affinity for pigeons. The line between genius and madness really does seem to be thin. It's also an important reminder of how mental health issues can touch anyone, even the most brilliant minds. And it somehow humanizes Tesla, making him less of a historical figure and more of a real person with peculiar habits and issues, just like all of us. This is what makes history so fascinating. 
It's not just about the inventions and discoveries, but also about the people behind them. Now, let's delve into another interesting aspect of Tesla's life, his heightened senses. His perception of the world around him was incredibly amplified compared to ours. He mentions in his autobiography how he could hear the ticking of a watch even with three rooms between him and the timepiece, or how a fly landing on a table would cause a dull thud in his ear. These extraordinary experiences shaped how Tesla perceived thought itself. He believed that our brains pick up images, ideas, and inventions from our surroundings, rather than creating them internally. Tesla's brilliance wasn't only in his groundbreaking scientific inventions, but also in his unique understanding of the human brain. He believed that if he could figure out how the brain decides which signals to tune into and which to discard, he could finally understand the workings of the mind and feel connected to other people. And it's this brilliance that led to his remarkable invention, the alternating current motor, which completely revolutionized how we use electric currents today. That is truly fascinating. It's intriguing to think about how Tesla's unusual perceptions influenced his groundbreaking inventions. His theory that our brains pick up on external signals seems to resonate with the current understanding of the mind as an information processing system. But I'm curious, how did his idea of alternating currents as opposed to direct currents help in the efficiency of motors? Ah, that's a great question. Existing motors required mechanical parts that were subject to wear and tear, reducing their efficiency. Tesla realized that alternating currents which flow back and forth could replace these physical parts. By using multiple alternating currents that were out of sync with one another, their voltages could be made to cancel out at just the right moments, producing a combined magnetic field that would steadily rotate, causing the rotor to spin. This was a groundbreaking innovation that completely changed the feasibility of electric power. That's incredible. It's like he transformed the physical into the electrical. A truly remarkable mind indeed. Can you discuss more about the impact of this invention on our everyday lives? I mean, how did this innovation change the reality of electrical power usage? Indeed, Tesla's invention of the alternating current motor was revolutionary. But Tesla was a visionary who had something even bigger in mind. His journey to this bigger dream began with the invention of the Tesla coil in 1891. Tesla initially set out to create an induction coil, a device where an electrical current in one coil of wire induces a current in a second coil of wire. However, he then discovered an amazing phenomenon when he adjusted the coils so that their electrical vibrations were aligned. This led to the discharge of a large spark. He had discovered the phenomenon of resonance, a principle that explains why tuning forks ring and why pendulums swing in unison. Tesla was able to convert this natural phenomenon into an engineering principle. Now, let's take a step back in time. Before Tesla's inventions, we only had electric lighting. But after Tesla, we had electric light and power. This was a significant leap in technological advancement. In 1865, James Clerk Maxwell had unified electricity and magnetism, showing that visible light was an electromagnetic vibration and that there could be others. Then, in 1888, Heinrich Hertz discovered radio waves, revealing an entire electromagnetic spectrum that was, in theory, infinitely vast. This new knowledge opened up a world full of different sorts of vibrations, of which scientists had no prior knowledge. In a few short years, our universe had grown infinitely richer, teeming with mysterious new possibilities. The challenge, however, was how to access and utilize these vibrations. William Crookes, a physicist who did pioneering work on electron beams said that the most difficult problem to be solved was the need for receivers that could respond to wavelengths between certain limits and ignore all others. And this is where Tesla's genius shone through yet again. He saw the solution in resonance. When the alternating currents in his coils vibrated in sync, they not only produced sparks, but also emitted radio waves. Attach an antenna to this, and you've got yourself a radio transmitter. Tesla's genius was not just in his inventions, but also in his ability to visualize the future of technology, paving the way for future scientists and inventors. Tesla's ingenuity didn't just stop at his coils emitting radio waves. 
He found that by tuning the coils, he could choose the frequency of the emitted waves. These tuned coils would only respond to waves of the resonant frequency when exposed to incoming radiation. So basically, Tesla was one of the first to understand the concept of tuning in the context of radio waves, right? Exactly. It's like tuning a radio to a specific station. Tesla's coil could act as a tuned receiver, only picking up the frequencies it was set to receive. Wow, that's fascinating. It also seems that Tesla's work was closely linked to the studies of electricity in the nervous system. Can you expand on that a bit? Certainly. You see, the study of electricity in the nervous system has always been interconnected. This dates back to the 18th century when Luigi Galvani made the first measurements of moving current using a frog's nerve and a long metal wire held up to a stormy sky. He noticed that when lightning flashed, the frog's muscles contracted. So there was this shared understanding of electricity in the nervous system, and they were even seen as analogous? Yes, absolutely. In fact, Samuel Morse, who used Alessandro Volta's battery to power his electric telegraph lines, even compared his telegraph to living nerves. I find it intriguing how Tesla's work on tuning and resonance in radio waves could potentially explain how our brains tune into the world around us. Exactly. This led many scientists at that time to speculate on the possibility of brain waves, much like radio waves. The discovery of wireless radio made people rethink the basic concepts of consciousness, viewing the brain as a kind of radio transmitter and receiver. Truly revolutionary. It's fascinating how these early discoveries continue to influence our understanding of both technology and the human mind. These innovative ideas and scientific discoveries sparked a wave of enthusiasm and excitement. The air was believed to be filled with brain waves as it is with sunbeams and starlight. People began to see the distance between humans shrinking and the concept of thought transference seemed like a natural outcome of Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. It's amazing to think that there was such fascination with this idea of thought transference. Even Mark Twain, a frequent visitor to Tesla's lab, was drawn into this speculation. Oh, absolutely. Mark Twain had a vision that the telegraph and telephone would become too slow and wordy for our needs, and that we must have the thought itself shot into our minds from a distance. He conjectured that the something which conveys our thoughts through the air from brain to brain is a subtler form of electricity. To think that we could capture this subtler form of electricity and force it to transmit our thoughts, it's almost mind-boggling. Yes, it's fascinating, and it led the inventors of that time to work hard towards building this mental telegraph. Alexander Graham Bell, for example, constructed helmets made of coiled wires, which two people could wear to transfer thoughts from one to the other. But Tesla had an even grander idea, didn't he? Indeed, he did. Tesla proposed a technology that could transmit more than just thoughts. He termed it television. However, this is not to be confused with our modern understanding of television. Tesla's vision was a device that could see at a distance what another person was seeing in their mind. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? Absolutely. Tesla's ingenuity never ceases to amaze. It's like he was envisioning a form of virtual reality long before it became a thing. Tesla had this grand vision of converting the entire Earth into a huge brain. His ideas were bold and revolutionary, especially for that time period. It certainly sounds like it. This was a time when the lines between the physical and the mental were blurring, isn't it? Absolutely. The electromagnetic spectrum was seen as a continuum with physical phenomena like infrared, radio waves, and x-rays on one end, and mental phenomena like fear, love, hope, and even imagination and ideas on the other. It almost feels like a form of alchemy, doesn't it? converting thoughts into something tangible. You could say that. And this period in the history of science was marked by rapid technological advancements. In just a few decades, we went from having no telegraph, phonograph, radio, or phone, to being able to summon voices from thin air and send messages across oceans. That must have had quite an impact on the public's perception of science and technology. Indeed, it left the public dizzy and scientists speculating. Unorthodox ideas and theories were entertained, blurring the line between science and pseudoscience. 
And yet, it seems these unorthodox ideas led to some significant advancements, didn't they? Yes, they did. Take Hans Berger, for instance. He was a German psychiatrist who set out to prove the existence of telepathy by measuring brain waves. His work led to the invention of the electroencephalogram, or EEG, a cornerstone technology in today's neuroimaging. So in a way, Tesla's era of electromagnetic magical thinking laid the groundwork for modern neuroscience? You could certainly argue that. Although we no longer view our brains as wireless telegraphs or our thoughts as things that can be transmitted by brain waves, the influence of that era is still felt in our current models of the brain and our understanding of cognition. Tesla believed that the nerves in our brains worked on the principle of resonance, and this meant that thoughts were things we could all tune into, given the right device. So, in essence, he wanted to create a technology that could unite everyone on a mental level. That's exactly right. Tesla had a grand vision of converting the entire Earth into a huge brain, in his words. He even announced plans to create a world system that would enable people everywhere to send energy and information to be received by anyone, anywhere else. That's quite a lofty goal. How did he plan to achieve this? Tesla believed that the Earth itself could act as a resonant cavity that could host standing waves of electrical vibrations. By pumping in energy at the Earth's resonant frequency, he theorized he could set the electrical activity of the entire planet in motion like striking a tuning fork and getting the whole world to vibrate in harmony. Precisely. And he began his ambitious project by constructing a massive Tesla coil-like tower at a site called Wardenclyffe on Long Island. This tower was connected to a well and tunnels where electricity would be pumped into the ground. That's extraordinary. How did people react to such a revolutionary project? The locals were certainly bemused by the towering construction. Yet Tesla's plans were larger than life, just like his ideas. He was dreaming of an Earth-spanning system that would use electromagnetic resonance to connect all humans on the planet. Tesla's vision for his tower was not limited to just connecting minds. He proposed a system of such towers that would connect all existing telegraph exchanges, integrate all phone lines, and even create a global news media. Sounds like he was way ahead of his time, planning for a form of global communication network. Indeed, his ideas also included linking up the world's stock tickers, distributing sermons globally, synchronizing clocks, and even providing a global navigation system. So this wasn't just about telecommunication, it was also about information dissemination and navigation. Exactly, but there's more. He also dreamed of transmitting images, music, text, and personal messages to an inexpensive receiver not bigger than a watch. That's incredible. Is it correct to say that he was envisioning a world where thoughts from one's retinas could be broadcasted to whoever else wanted to see them? That's right. But beyond his technological ambitions, there was a personal element as well. Tesla's obsessive compulsive tendencies often left him disconnected and alone. He hoped that his invention would bring him closer to people. It feels like he was trying to create a way to overcome his own isolation. Yes. Tesla envisioned a world where we'd all be thinking together, like the invisible cogs and gears of a single brain. It was about more than just technology. It was about connecting humanity on a level never before imagined. Tesla's ambitious project, however, ended in failure. By 1902, the tower was completed, but the rest of the site wasn't and he was running out of funds. A year later, it became clear that no additional money was coming. Tesla had no evidence to show that his project would work, and he couldn't attract new investors. How did he respond to this setback? Frustrated, Tesla cranked up the coil and discharged a storm. The air was filled with blinding streaks of electricity, which seemed to shoot off into the darkness on some mysterious errand. That must have been quite a sight. But even with that display, I suppose scientists today don't believe his tower would have worked? That's correct. Scientists largely agree that Tesla's tower, even if completed, would not have worked. Tesla believed that he could transmit power through the Earth with no losses because the Earth would function like an inelastic medium. But it doesn't. So it was a beautiful idea, but one that didn't align with the reality of the world. 
Yes, and this failure was something from which Tesla never really recovered. In the years that followed, he became more of a recluse, occasionally making wild pronouncements to the press about inventions he'd dreamed up but had nothing to show for. The public grew impatient, and science moved on without him. Such a brilliant mind yet so isolated, how did Tesla's story end? Well, in December of 1916, Tesla was set to receive the prestigious Edison Medal for his early work in polyphase and high-frequency electric currents. But when Tesla was meant to take the stage, he was nowhere to be found. He was eventually found outside, surrounded by pigeons. It was a poignant image of a man once poised to change the world, now standing alone among birds. Before there were towers or telegraphs, there were pigeons. Homing pigeons, known for their exceptional navigation, had been used to transmit messages since the days of Julius Caesar. Really? Pigeons were the original messengers? Yes, a well-trained bird could fly 600 miles without stopping, averaging 60 miles an hour. In times of war, they served in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the National Guard, and even the U.S. Forest Service and CIA. That's fascinating. I had no idea pigeons played such a critical role. They were instrumental in communication. But when Guglielmo Marconi, using a system of Tesla's resonant circuits, transmitted the first wireless radio signal across the Atlantic in 1901, pigeons became less relevant. I guess technology really did put these feathery messengers out of a job. Yes, and ironically, Tesla, whose inventions contributed to their unemployment, took them in. He had a particular affection for a white pigeon, saying, if she needed me, nothing else mattered. That's a touching story. Tesla, despite his scientific genius, had a soft spot for animals, especially the ones that his own inventions had displaced. One night, Tesla's beloved white pigeon flew in through his open window. He felt she wanted to tell him something. As he looked at her, he realized she was dying. Tesla claimed that as he received her message, there came a powerful light from her eyes. When that pigeon died, Tesla felt that something went out of his life, and he thought his life's work was finished. A profound bond indeed. It's a testament to Tesla's deep empathy, even for creatures so small. Yes, and it's a striking story. On the 7th of January, 1943, at 10.45 p.m., Nikola Tesla was found dead in his room. His obituary in the New York Times read, for 40 years, he lived and worked in a world of fantasy crackling with electric sparks packed with strange towers to receive and emit energy and dreamy contrivances to give utopian man complete control of nature. It was a lonely life. Tesla's revolutionary ideas and inventions truly changed the world. Indeed. While we've made remarkable strides in wireless technology, the homing pigeon and its navigation abilities remain a mystery. Researchers have various theories, from powerful sense of smell and acute vision to the ability to sense Earth's magnetic fields. It's amazing that even with all our technological advancements, there's still so much we don't understand about nature. Absolutely. Science is always a journey of discovery, and there's always more to learn. And remember, Tesla always kept the window open, suggesting he was never truly alone. In an interesting experiment, researchers put these pigeons in a magnetic resonance imaging machine with a strength of three Teslas. The birds, when released, struggled to find their way. So their navigation abilities were disrupted by the strong magnetic field? That seems to be the case. Meanwhile, the control group of pigeons, who weren't exposed to the strong magnetic field, headed home as usual. So they're mysteriously tuned into some invisible vibrations or signals? Exactly. Despite our leaps in technology, there's still so much we don't understand about the natural world. Just like Tesla's inventions have left a lasting legacy, these homing pigeons and their mysterious navigation capabilities continue to intrigue and puzzle scientists to this day. To recap, Nikola Tesla, the brilliant inventor with a penchant for the enigmatic, had a deep affection for homing pigeons. His connection with these creatures was profound, so much so that he felt their loss deeply. Tesla, a man famed for his inventions such as the alternating current motor and Tesla coil, lived a life full of curiosity and wonder, ever pushing the boundaries of what was possible in his time. His love for pigeons, seemingly unusual, was a testament to his empathy and his determination to understand the world around him from all angles, 
even from the perspective of a homing pigeon. Nikola Tesla, a man who communicated with light and longed to connect the world in ways we can only dream of. His life truly was a mystery, just like the homing pigeons he cherished. And that's a wrap for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this journey into the life of Nikola Tesla and the enigmatic homing pigeons. If you like this episode, blast the like button, leave us a comment, and share it with your friends. Your support keeps this podcast running. Absolutely. We truly appreciate your support. Join us next time as we explore another fascinating topic. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. This intriguing story about Tesla and his pigeon comes from the Big Think site. The article, titled Tesla's Pigeon, How the Great Inventor Fell for a Bird, was penned by Amanda Gefter and published on February 3rd, 2024. You'll find the full URL in the video description if you're interested in further exploration. Now, I'm signing off.